and we're back. So here's uh, another cool example. So this example is to do uh, with basically half-lives. And half-life is just simply exponential decay. Okay, so for exponential decay, it means that something is decaying uh, exponentially. So it decays very quickly down. All right, so in this example, it says you have a, a radiating compound and has an unknown half-life time. So we do not know what the half-life time is, meaning that whatever you have, all right, how long does it take to basically cut its maybe mass, in this case mass, maybe energy, okay, or anything in half, right? If you can cut it in half, how long will that take, right? So how much time will that take? So here it says in the lab, it has been shown that a sample of 25.4 grams has reduced its size to 1.8 grams in an extremely fast time of one minute and 25 seconds. What is the half-life time in seconds of this compound? Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have given. In this question we have, so this is all about masses it seems. So we started with an initial mass of 25.4 grams. So notice that's right in the question there. It says it was reduced in size, so the final mass was 1.8 grams. So that's right here. And that happened very quickly. So it says this happened in, so time t, in one minute and 25 seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds, right? So I'm gonna convert this to make it consistent. So meaning I'll put everything in seconds because it tells me the half time or half lifetime supposed to be in seconds. So that's gonna be 85 seconds in total. All right, now my time for half, I'm gonna put a little subscript half. I don't know what this is, right? How many seconds does it take to go in half? Now, it started at 25.4. So half of that, right, would have been, so if I would take that, let's say take the calculator, 25.4 divided by two, because that's half. That's 12.7 grams. So we wanna know uh, how quickly would it take to go in half. Now, we have gone up to 1.8, so it's way more than a half. It's several, you know, half-lives that we have um, experienced. Okay, so this is what we have now. So for those who may have forgotten, your n, all right, is equal to, okay, meaning n is just the number of half-life periods, okay? So the number of half-life periods, and that is just your total time divided by however long it takes Okay, for one half-life to pass. So now we have that. Now the equation for half-lives, so it's not actually very difficult. So that equation for any half-life is, so in this case we're talking about mass. It doesn't have to be mass. It could be energy or something else. But in this case it's mf, all right? So mass final is equal to m initial. And this is now one half, and this is coming because it's half-life. So if you remember exponential growth and decay, it is one minus, because it's decaying, it's coming down, okay, it would have been this. And my R is 50% because it's a half. So that's why one minus a half is one half, and this is N. So now if I substitute everything in here, now I know what N is, so I'm gonna be solving for N, in just a little bit of time. So I have the following. So MF was 25.4. MI, actually, so that was MI. So let me be careful here. Yeah, so MI and MF was 1.8. So that's there. This is 25.4, one and a half N. All right, so I can solve this for n, and then if I have n, so notice I have t here as well. So I know that t is 85 
seconds. Okay, so this is what I have. So that n right here, so this n right there, basically is equal to, this is t over t one half. So I'm gonna solve it like this. So first, let's divide both sides. So I'm gonna divide both sides. That's gonna get rid of this. And I'm gonna get 1.8 over 25.4 equals to one half to the n. Now, in order to solve for n, so how many half life periods I went through, then, okay, I can use log. So this is gonna be n equals log of 1.8 divided by 25.4. So that's this divided by log of a half. Right now, a half is just 0 0.5. Okay, so this is what I have right there. So let's see what this gives me. So log of 1.8 divided by 25.4, and that is divided by a log of half. Okay, so this gives me, I'm gonna keep those in there, so 3.8187, so on. I'm gonna keep it on the calculator. Now, the reason why I'm keeping it on the calculator, because they're asking me for what is the half-life time so I have to be able to solve this, okay, for my half-life time, which is that. So this, okay, basically is, so N, this is T over, okay, half is equal to 3.8187 and so on and so on, all right? Now, I know T, so T was given to me, so this was 85 seconds. So I have 85 seconds over, okay, T one half equals to 3.8187 dot, dot, dot. So now rearranging this, so really, so I have T a half, so I'm gonna multiply both sides. So this is gonna come up on the other side, okay? And I'm gonna get 85 divided by, 3.8187 and so on. So that's what I have there, okay? So now, because I wanna be as accurate as I can here, I'm gonna write this out for myself, 59685, all right? So that's just from the calculator. So let me clear this, and this is 85 divided by 3.818759. 685. Now you might say, do I have to keep all of those? Keep it until you get your final answer. If you start rounding too early, you might be a little bit off. Okay, so this is 22. So half-life is 22 point. Now I know I have to round this to something. Round your answer to two significant figures. So there you go. That's all I have to do. So that is my half lifetime. Okay, so let me do that. So I encourage you to walk yourself through this example, okay, and then see if you can come up with the answer. All right, so this is a great, great question. It's not an easy question if you haven't seen half lives before, but it's a fantastic one to try. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Cheers, everybody.